Hello everybody, Scott Golding here with the uh, Superstars of Wrestling Review for uh, August 6th, uh, 1994. Again, August 6th, moving towards SummerSlam 94. SummerSlam 94, some say it's a decent show, others say it's the dregs of the WWF. I know as a kid, I was a preteen watching this and still... Uh, unwilling to give up my lockdown. To be completely honest, um, I enjoyed WWF through the Austin winning the title from Shawn Michaels at uh, WrestleMania 14, and then that from there forward, WWE died to me. I honestly uh, have not um, uh, really felt they were a competent, complete promotion from that point forward. Anyway. Uh, this includes the announcement of the Tag Team Championship. Ted Shrinkers would defend against Bam Bam Bigelow and IRS. And the Women's Champion, Alundra Blaze, would defend against Bull Nakano. And Babel would face Jeff Jarrett at SummerSlam. Also announced that Walter Payton would be in the original corner for his match against Diesel. And Lex Luger is a guest in the Heartbreak Hotel in which Luger said Ted DiBiase doesn't own him. And that he doesn't have a price. Included footage of Leslie Nielsen trying to solve the mystery of The Undertaker. This is, well, abysmally bad. Anyway, Owen Hart and Mike Clooney. Owen Hart, of course, seconded by Jim Neidhart. 251. Owen Hart, one of the best talents in the world at the time, at least to my estimation. Loved Owen Hart as a heel. And, for the most part, actually thought that Owen was uh, what I would consider better wrestler than Brett. Always kind of have felt that Owen with the extra personality, was better than Brett in a lot of ways. I know a lot of people are not in agreement with that, but anyway. Um, basic punch kick and an enziguri basic stuff by Owen. Owen, of course, using the leg to get uh, uh, Clooney in position for the sharpshooter and the win with the sharpshooter. Leslie Nielsen uh, is delivered the pizza about the heartbreak uh, about the by The Undertaker. Uh, Diesel and uh, Shawn Michaels talk about in the Heartbreak Hotel uh, the upcoming defeat of Razor Ramon for the Intercontinental Championship. Lex Luger uh, basically says that DiBiase never had his price. DiBiase never could buy anybody or anything of major value. And um, uh, ultimately that uh, runs together here as well. Um, uh, ultimately, that kind of comes together, and uh, Jim Powers uh, is back as an enhancement talent here, which is weird because Powers kind of had been treated by as a top of the card or uh, um, opening match guy on house shows. I hadn't seen him on TV in a while though. And certainly bulked up and becomes more Ultimate Warrior like looking. Anyway, Quang, aka Savio Vega, although doing the mask gimmick, is his opponent here. Crossbody, Harvey Wilkman still managing Quang at this point in his career run. Near fall by Powers, and again, Quang having a lot of athletic ability, not managing to get uh, as much of a reception as one might imagine him to get in this time period. Anyway, up and over with the spin kick and basic maneuvers. Quang defeating uh, him, uh, his Powers, in 121. Uh, and ultimately gets a spinning heel kick victory. Jeff Jarrett pinning the 1-2-3 kid in 451 with his feet on the ropes for leverage. After the belt, referee Joey Morella comes to ringside to tell the uh, original official Tim White what happened, and Jarrett quickly leaves ringside during that whole process, trying to steal the victory and add extra heat to his uh, run. Anyway, also hype Diesel basically saying that... Uh, Razor Ramon is going to fall to him at SummerSlam and uh, uh, not regain the Intercontinental title. The Bret Hart uh, uh, kid down a hallway promo is aired, basically hyping the new generation. Big deal here. Uh, Jeff Jarrett and the 1-2-3 kid have another good match. Uh, Jarrett goes to the outside. does the, the kid does the plancha. Very basic maneuvers, but at the same time, things that at the time in 1994 were both, um, you know, involved and extreme for the nature of the WWF product at the time. Obviously, we're not talking ECW extreme, but just high-impact energy and maneuvers that we don't often see. Jerry goes to the outside, sends the kid into the 
back into the ring. Jarrett tries to cut him off, clotheslines him, the like Jeff Jarrett moving around a good bit and getting everything he wants out of the process. Jarrett also coming off the second rope on the inside, tries for, uh, I believe, like a diving elbow or something like that, doesn't get it. Cut off by Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett manages to take a couple of shots under the uh, under the chin and a roll up there. A uh, couple of uh, uh, you know feet on the ropes, but Joey Morella comes in, tries to uh, reverse that decision a little bit. Uh, highlights of the Bob Backlund heel turn, laying out. Uh, Bret Hart with the cross face chicken wing previous week. Uh, Duke the Dumpster Josie is here, and Duke Josie is in an enhancement match uh, up next here, uh, facing off against, um, let's see, uh, Ray Hudson with a power slam 137. Fan by the name of Lauren Jones is a guest ring announcer for the match. Josie. Uh, lots of punch kicks, super basic stuff. This was almost a rib. Alex McMahon said he could take anyone, including a man who was the number one, um, you know, uh, or number 500 in the PWI 500, make him into a star. Kind of did for a little while. The gimmick runs its course in about maybe at most two years. Anyhow, uh, pump handle power slam by Duke the Dumpster Drossy leads to a victory. For Drosy and gets things going in that way. Uh, Todd Pettengill announces the women's title match. Rolander Blaze Bull Nakano also announces the tag team title match. IRS and uh, um, Bam Bam Bigelow. Tatanka basically says he's going to square off with Lex Luger and get things handled. Luger's a sellout. Bret Hart says the, the feud between the Hart brothers is in fact going to be over. And ultimately, Leslie Nielsen is still looking for The Undertaker with a goofy spot. Mike Haywood uh, against uh, Razor Ramon is up next. Of course, Razor's still going for the Name of Continental title sooner rather than later. They do an inset promo where a fan looks like he gets beat up and kind of challenges the various wrestlers. Kind of goofy. Uh, you know, discus shots in the corner. And then the... Um, Top uh, of the run, the back suplex from the middle rope and the razor's edge by Scott Hall. One, two, three, and away we go there. Um, then we move to Million Dollar Man, bringing out a member of the Million Dollar Corporation. Uh, basically mocking Tatanka for, uh, from Raw, mocking Tatanka for caring about Lex Luger in the, in the way that he does. Speaking of Luger, he's up in the final enhancement match of the day. A backbreaker by Luger and then the torture uh, the torture rack by Luger. Uh, Luger defeating his adversary, which uh, is pretty simple. And then, there we go. We'll move on to the next in the series. Uh, we'll be back with more right after this.